Hey friends, welcome back to Whiskey and Wit and to another installment of the 12 Days of Christmas. Today's video is all DIYs pertaining to my favorite Christmas movie, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Now keep in mind with all of these, you can definitely make them for any of your favorite movies, so they don't just have to be Christmas Vacation. Let's get started. Up first are these super fun throw pillows. Uh, I really love the buffalo check and they are made out of placemats that I found at Walmart. So each of these were $1.88 a piece. They were in the front kind of Christmas kitchen section and they are 13 inches by 18 inches. And what I really loved about them for pillows is the fringe on the outside. So the first step I took was to measure and see what that 13 by 18 really was. Was it from tip of tassel to the other tip of the tassel or was it just the inside woven piece? Once I figured out how big I wanted my stencils, I went through and cut out my heat transfer vinyl. I purchased all of my heat transfer vinyl from Expressions Vinyl and I will link them down below. You can also get them on Amazon Prime. And you wanna make sure that your um, shiny side is down so it's counterintuitive to the other vinyl methods. But here is why. You wanna make sure that your design is mirrored so then that way when you go to pull it off, that carrier transfer sheet is gonna be on top. So as I'm pulling this, you're seeing that Margot is backwards. And I also recommend as you're weeding, take out the little pieces within each letter first and then rip it across. If not, your hand will stick to the stuff. So then I headed over to my ironing board and I gave each of the placemats a quick iron just to make sure that all of the creases were out. And then I figured out where I wanted to put my two decals. Then I just go ahead and use an iron. If you've got a Cricut maker, if you've got different heat presses, go ahead and use that, but I don't. So I just used my iron, it worked just fine. And I also wanted to make sure that I called out that you're gonna wanna use something as a kind of carrier transfer sheet there, which I used this iron. So then I repeated those same steps on the Margot pillow and then I went back to assemble them. So the first thing I did was line it up with my second placemat. And then I went through with just some hot glue and outlined the outside of the placemats. When you get to the sides, you wanna make sure that you draw that line of glue just inside of those tassels because you wanna keep those um, intact so that you have that fringe on the outside of your pillow. And then once you get to the bottom, you're gonna to wanna to go about mm, less than a quarter of a way, maybe an eighth of the way. So you've got enough space in the bottom for your hand to fit through. And then I just used the rest of my pillow that I used for my gnome pillows a few videos back. Um, I had plenty left and I just went ahead and stuffed them. This is all personal preference. So if you're gonna be laying on the pillows, you probably want more stuffing. Mine are just for show. So I didn't wanna use a ton. And then I just glued up the bottom, repeated that with the Margot pillow and that is it. Super easy, um, it was under $5 per pillow, so the whole set is under 10 bucks, and it goes super cute with my DIY gnome. Up next are these really cute tier trade signs, and these literally, the sky's the limit, you can do whatever you want with them. So I started with these square signs from the Dollar Tree, and they may not have these specific patterns there still, I got these kind of early in the fall but you can go ahead and grab whichever ones they have. They still have them in store. I recently saw them. So step one is to dismantle your signs. So if you have ones that have those little kind of pop out 3D elements like I did, I went ahead and just popped them off because they're from the Dollar Tree. They disassemble pretty easily, which is nice. Um, the other thing you're gonna wanna do is remove the hanger on the back because that is holding everything together and you're not gonna be able to pop it apart. I also went through and removed the sticker just so then that way that edge was ready to go when I was going to DIY it. Final step was to take a small screwdriver and get rid of that top hanger and then take your fingers and just press from the inside and these are just held with some cheap glue realistically so you can pop them apart. You don't want to go too heavy handed with the pushing because you're going to snap that middle piece. But if you put your pressure along the outside, it will pop. You're just going to want to be careful. Now that 
stuff on the inside is going to rip, but that's totally fine because you don't need that. We're going to get rid of it anyway, um, but kind of go out and around. And as you can see, it pops out and then you can freely pull that piece out. So then it makes it a lot easier to work with and you don't have to worry about painter's tape or anything crazy like that. So then I gave my outer frames um, some pops of color so for the white one I just went over it with one coat of Waverly chalk paint it's white already but it was kind of beat up in the store so I wanted to make sure it had a stark white um, contrast to my actual graphical piece of the sign so I just went through and gave that a quick coat I also went through with some crimson which is the red that I've used for Christmas and the 4th of July Waverly chalk paint. Next step is to finish off your inside so I went through and kind of ripped off that additional um, kind of it's kind of like wallpaper but I guess it's a decal on the inside. Um, I just pulled everything off of there so it was pretty flat. It doesn't have to be perfect but you don't want any of those rough edges because you're going to be covering them up later. Once everything is cleaned off, then you're gonna to wanna to give your insides a base coat. So what I did is my actual graphics and words went on the back. So the original back of the sign, just because you're ripping off all that stuff from the inside. Then it was time for my SVG decals. Now two of the ones that I used on the signs came from a blogger. I will link that down below. You just have to sign up for her email list to get that. And her emails have been pretty great since I downloaded them. So I would recommend them. That'll be down below. I will also link a free printable for the blessing sign. Um, that one I created myself in Canva and you can also use that as a printable if you don't wanna cut it out as an SVG file. So once everything was cut and weeded, I went through and added my transfer tape and applied them to the signs. Once these signs were complete, I popped them back in just to make sure everything fit with the outsides that I wanted. And then I went through and used some Dollar Tree wrapping paper in the Buffalo check print um, just to finish off the back. So I measured and cut three pieces and then I went through and just Mod Podge them to the back of the sign just so then that way if you put them on a tiered tray, you're not gonna see that gross ripped back. You're gonna see a nice finished look. You could use scrapbook paper, but this is just what I had on hand and for a dollar from the Dollar Tree worked out quite nicely. I let the Mod Podge dry overnight and then my signs were complete. I love these. I've seen these all over Instagram and for a dollar you can't beat the price and you can also do these as printables and frames if you don't have a Cricut. And finally, this is my favorite one out of the three. This is a wood sign that pays homage to the first scene in the movie when the family is out getting their Christmas tree and Clark basically says, you know, this isn't going in the yard, it's going in our house. So this sign started with this clearance sign I got from Hobby Lobby, but you can definitely use one of their unfinished ones and a car from Target. My first step was to prime this because it's not an unfinished sign. If you have an unfinished sign, don't worry about it. But I painted off the corners and then I went ahead and painted the inside black so it looked like a chalkboard surface. I gave it two coats of this ink by Waverly Chalk Paint that I get at Walmart. As always, I'll link it down below for you. And while that was drying, then I moved on to the car. So this car I will link on Target.com. They sell them every year, so I have a ton of these. But what I did was I took off the wreath from the back, made sure I removed that little um, staple, and then I started to paint it. So everywhere there was red, I took this nutmeg brown from Michaels and just went ahead and painted over that. Now your first coat is gonna be really light and I probably had to do about four coats just to get it to cover, uh, but you wanna make sure that you do lighter coats so then that way you don't have gobs of paint everywhere. Once you get the brown where you want it, then I took just some of that ink chalk paint that I used on the last sign and covered the tires just because they had red in the center and I just wanted them to look like regular tires. And then I went through with some smaller paint brushes just to finish off all of the little details. I took some marsh green apple barrel paint and painted off some of the wood areas just so it was the brown and green kind of traditional station wagon look that you see in the movie. 
And then I went through and printed off my decal. This is another one I designed myself, so it will be a free printable and um, file that you can put into Cricut or Silhouette um, design software. I cut it out on my white Expressions vinyl. This is regular vinyl, not heat transfer. Um, I did use permanent, um, so it's an oracle. I'll link that down below for you. And then I went through with my transfer tape, something else I'll link below for you. I get a lot of questions on that. And made sure it was centered, went in with my squeegee and stuck it down. So then to finish off the car, once the paint was all dry, I took a Dollar Tree tree and painted the bottom brown so it looked like that chunk of dirt when the tree comes straight out of the ground. I took some hot glue, put it on the top of the car, and then I kind of worked with the tree to get it to not only stick to the roof of the car, but also look like it was strapped around the hood. And then once all the glue was set there, I went through with some Dollar Tree jute twine and kind of used this as how it was kind of tied down to the Griswold family car in the movie. Once it was strapped on, I also tied a longer piece so then that way I could tie it to the sign. The final step was to attach it to the sign, so I got it where I wanted it, fed my jute twine through the back kind of alligator hook for hanging, so it stayed, and then I tied myself a knot, and then I kept it in place with some hot glue, so it's going to stay there and still be able to be hung on the wall. I love this. I love that it is a farmhouse sign with just a fun quote. I haven't seen this on a ton of signs too. Like there's so many Cousin Eddie signs. There are so many like jolliest bunch of, you know what's this side of the nut house. So I love that this was a little bit different and it was something that I made. Thank you so much for watching and checking out these DIYs for day two of the 12 days of Christmas. I will link the full playlist at the end of the video so you can see all the videos that are currently live. Also, let me know down below what's your favorite Christmas movie and if it's Christmas Vacation, what was your favorite DIY that we did in this video. Again, thank you so much for watching. Hit subscribe so you don't miss a future 12 days of Christmas video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!